Welcome to twoquestions.tv. With me today is John Abdo, and we're talking about staying in shape during the holidays. Welcome to twoquestions.tv. I'm Susan Barancini Mo, and joining me today is author and media personality John Abdo, who's regarded worldwide as an elite level authority on health, fitness, nutrition, muscle, and athletic conditioning. Hi, John. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for the invitation, Susan. Appreciate it. Oh, I'm so glad to be talking to you. <laughs> Normally, I do okay during Thanksgiving, but this year, oh, this year was at my house. I had to cook. We had family in for two weeks, and I'm pretty sure I gained like 10 pounds. I'm not joking. That's not any, I think I gained 10 pounds. So today, you and I are talking about getting in shape, staying in shape, not letting the holidays thwart your progress. So what do we do now? Because Thanksgiving has happened, Christmas is coming, and you know there will be all these baskets of sweets and cookies and another big meal. How do we stop the madness? How do we stop the madness? So we, I don't want to start the new year with a much bigger health goal, right? So what do we do? Well, you know, the thing is, I've been asked this question for 45 years in a row. <laughs> I've asked this question right after the holidays. It's like, what do we do now? We gained all this weight. You know, when I, when I, when I grew up in, in health and fitness, I grew up in the world of preventative medicine. Yes. And today, every, everyone is into recuperation. How do, how do I recover, right? So since the damage is done, so to say, the thing is, is that people know what to do. They know what to eat. They know, certainly know what not to eat, but they still do it, right? So, yes. you know, I could, I could give you all the, the points and the principles, but unless and until people start to discipline themselves, then that is, that's, that, that's the key. Knowledge is not power. It's utilizing that knowledge that yes. creates that 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 uh, that creates the power. So when you see somebody uh, like like during this time of the year, have fun. I mean, enjoy yourself. But those who are over splurging and are doing damage to their bodies, if you're already overweight, if you already have high blood pressure, if you already have arthritis and sore joints and a stiff back, mm -hmm. then why add all that extra pressure to your body? So. You know, if I, when I hang around people, you know, people don't like me at the dinner table because all oh, John's here. He's, he's, <laughs> but, 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 John's who you're eating. but it's kind of a good thing because I'm, I'm the, I'm the disciplinarian in, yeah. in those, those times. But when, when you go through life, you have to be your own disciplinarian, but at the same time, be your own best friend. Mm. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard when you're surrounded by people who aren't doing that. I think that's the hardest part. Yeah, I mean, hey, food tastes great, you know, and, uh, you know, when uh, during the festivities, during this time of the year, any, any time that, that you want to celebrate, I mean, food is something that satisfies many of our needs. The thing is, is that as athletes, we eat to satisfy our nutritional slash performance needs. Uh, athletes, yeah. athletes typically don't train for, for the muscle and, and the low body fat. That just happens automatically as a result of that lifestyle. So when, when if, if people could shift to saying, oh, I want to eat healthy, and then I'll bonus myself by having the good stuff, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or a lot of times, how many times do you see people that go to a buffet or smorgasbord and they see that ice cream machine where you get, it's like, oh, that's what I want to get to, right? So they think, yeah. about, they think about the dessert before the main course. Mm -hmm. So you have to give your body the main course because the human body is so complex. I brought one of my models here today. <laughs> This is a first on two questions.tv. I love it. <laughs> Hello, Bonnie. Hi, Susan. So, I mean, I look at the human body on an internal basis. What's on the inside of the body? And obviously, yeah. this is our structural support, our skeletal system, but you got muscles, you got, you got organs, you got the, your central nervous system, which is wiring throughout your whole body, you got your digestive system. What's going on in the inside? So when you put food right in here, in the mouth, everything is affected and or influenced as a result of that. So, you know, I always try to tell people, always make the healthiest decision. And that's a tough thing to do for most beginners and intermediate. 
I've been doing this for a long time. So for me, it's, it's, it's natural. It's, it's, it's second nature. But when I teach classes and we, when we have user groups, which go on for weeks, if not months on, on end, at the beginning, everyone's confused. They're always complaining, hands down. It's like, oh, I can't deal with this. I don't know how to do it. I don't know what decisions to make. The two-week period, Susan, the two-week period, after a while, now it shifts to where they're yes. starting to tell me what to do. I mean, it's a really beautiful experience. So stay with it, you know, and, and, and after time, your body and your mind or your attitude, your knowledge, whatever, adapts to what you are trying to accomplish. I it like takes, it. It takes time. Okay, so there's so much information out there. There's so many diets, there's conflicting information. Low fat is bad for you now. High fat is good for you now. It used to be bad for you. There's, there's so much out there. How can anybody really sift through all of that? And is it, is it as straightforward as just, look, we all know, avoid the packaged stuff. Like, obviously, avoid you know, your Hershey bars, your, you know, chips, your sodas, like, is it, is it just that? But when you get down to it and you start to get granular with it, how do you know what to follow? For me, I always tell people to first take away all the stuff that they know has been tampered with. I yeah. eat the processed stuff, mm -hmm. right? Get back to mother nature. From there, that is the main course. That's what you want to fill and or occupy the, the, the bulk of your dinner plate. Then if you want to have the, the Hershey bar, or as you mentioned, or you know the muffin or whatever, then that is the bonus. That's the dessert. That happens af afterwards. But many, if not all, of the eating programs out there, and I don't want to mention any names because they <laughs> all have good parts to them. Yeah individually they are insane to follow because they will drive you crazy as if you just jump off board one time because what happens when you jump off a protocol a program your brain registers guilt and when your Ooh. brain registers guilt it registers failure at the same time so it's like, okay, I've been on this great program. I'm losing all this weight. I'm feeling fantastic. Oh, here's Thanksgiving and here's Christmas and here's the birthday party and here's all this other stuff. So failure, 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 yeah. failure. So that's what people experience. So whether they're consciously aware of it or not, people are failing at these programs. Eat mm -hmm. good all the time. That's, that's my protocol. And, you know, when when people say, well, you shouldn't be eating this kind of food, you shouldn't be combining that type of food with this type of food, all those are is just modern day concoctions. Because back in the good old days, when our ancestors grew up, when they went to a dinner table, they ate anything that was on the table, but it all came from their hunting and gathering. Right, right. right. They didn't say, oh, we can't eat meat, or we can't eat fat. But someone would say, are you crazy? It took us months to get this animal. You know? So in, in our modern day uh, psychology, in our modern day physiology, we are trying to design these programs as like, oh, this, this program with carbohydrates, this program with fat, this program with uh, protein, this program with this, this program with that. Just if you eat good all the time, your body will balance out. Now, the, the catch to that, is that a lot of people who eat wrong for some people it happens immediately but certainly over a long period of time their body's digestive system their management system of the waste that they're putting inside their body breaks down their metabolism so mm -hmm. then at that point in time certain foods should be avoided because it's just putting too much stress in their body but it wasn't caused from, and uh, there's probably a tiny percentage of it, but it probably wasn't caused from eating good food. It was eating a combination of bad food. Great example, eggs. Everyone thinks eggs are bad for you, right? <laughs> eggs is Mother Nature's most perfect creation. It's got the highest biological value of protein. It's got the healthy cholesterol. It's got vitamins, minerals, and, and, and a great amount of, of, of amino acids, but eggs are guilty by association. 
because when mm. you put it on your on your plate, right? Well, you got the bacon, the pork sausages, you got the uh, the uh, the waffle and the pancakes with the syrup dripping over the side. So everyone goes, oh, it's the eggs. It's the eggs. <laughs> and the people who ate the pork chops or the the, uh, the pork sausages and the bacon's pouring it in every single morning throughout their whole entire life, all of a sudden now they started having gastrointestinal problems. They're, oh, it's the red meat. It's the red meat. The red yeah. meat's bad for you. It's <laughs> healthy, good red meat. Back in our good old days, when your grandfathers and mine were out there hunting, if they found a buffalo, they're going to they're gonna hunt that thing up or we're going to have a nice party with buffalo meat, right? Yeah. Red meat. So, you know, I try to go back to the origin of man, look inside what our body is composed of, Hi, bye. And, <laughs> and try to guide people that way. But again, it's like, wow, you know, whether I'm making sense or not to a lot of people, it's like, there's a lot of information for them to manage on a daily basis. Just start with, the, with, with this one phrase, always make the healthiest decision. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you're cooking an apple pie, Put real apples in it. Oh, right? God, yes. <laughs> you know, because of these things that come out of a can, you know, with all that syrup stuff, right? I mean, make the healthiest decision, and that's something that will, again, if when you fail, you register failure, but if you know you're making a good decision, now you're registering, hey, I did something good. It boosts your confidence. This whole lifestyle, Susan, is about mentality. It has nothing to do with the body, mm -hmm. because when people get overweight, how do they get overweight? By overeating. How do you overeat? It's a decision. It's a decision to put the food into your mouth, right? So <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. I mean, um, you know, things seem to happen. I've I've been a person of discipline many times in my life, and yet there are always these pockets where I'm thinking to myself, this is not something that is in my sort of my my library of food I want to eat right? So this is not a thing. Like this is not in that category of healthy choices. And yet I'm still eating it. Why am I doing that? I don't know. And, yeah. and I'm, I'm not connecting those two things. And that's always where I get in trouble. But you'll be so proud of me because I had two eggs and a quarter of an avocado for breakfast today. Good for you. Wow. <laughs> high five. High five. High five. There you go. You know, I, I, I just think, you know, I go back to the hunter-gatherer. A lot of people can't relate to it. I spent a lot of time study, studying this stuff. Well, let's say you and I were walking through the forest, and it's been days since we've eaten. All of a sudden, we see a plant. Yeah. It's like, let's try that. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, let's try that. Or we see a bunch of animals chewing on some uh, berries over there. It's like, I haven't had that stuff before. Yeah. Let's give, let's give that a try. So, you know, during the holidays when everybody has their uh, potluck or whatever you call, call it, everybody goes, oh, let's try that, let's try that, let's try that. And all of a sudden, mm, this tastes pretty good. And the taste buds override that healthiest decision part of your brain. Right. And all of a sudden, you start to, to, uh, to overconsume. The other thing is to have goals. For me, um, I, I have this product called the Abder. I'm on TV all the time. Oh, yeah my abs and doing doing you know my little exercises and stuff like that Everyone goes, hey let's let's see those washboard abs so for me it's a personal passion but it's a professional obligation because you're interviewing what i guess i think you introduced me as the health expert or whatever yeah what kind of health expert would be somebody who had hot belly and wobbled around and, you know, <laughs> and behind closed doors i'm eating donuts and stuff like that so, you know, it's, 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 it's one of those things where when you have a goal, so a lot of people don't have fitness goals. They don't need fitness goals. Like, you know, Hey, I have to work. I have to take care of the family. I got to take care of the business, all this other stuff. But, you know, now all of a sudden when you hear somebody saying, Oh, I have to go to a wedding or guess what? Mm. Summertime, <laughs> you know, everyone wants to go to the beach in the summertime, this, that, or the other. So now all of a sudden they have a goal to to train for and that's a really great motivation is for somebody yeah. to have something to strive for and at the same time it keeps your m mentality from wobbling and gets you kind of like laser focus on on the mission 
I love it. I love it. And for entrepreneurs, we need energy to keep our businesses going, don't we? So. Oh man. Yeah. That is, you know, there's another program I teach as you're striving for wealth, you need to maintain your health. Yeah. I used to be a personal trainer and back in those days, it was the Vogue thing. It's like, you know, only the rich can hire a personal trainer. Right? So I used to go to a lot of rich people's homes and when I go to these rich people's homes, I'm thinking, wow, I'm going to be like so impressed with these people. And unfortunately, I was not. No. They were slow. They were overweight. They were despondent. They just, some of them were grumpy. And it's like, wow, I'll keep my health. <laughs> <laughs> That's what wealth is all about, right? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, so, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just one of those things where, um, People who are trying to live life productively need to understand, just like an automobile, if you want to go on a trip or a journey with your car, you got to have the right air in your tires, you got to have the right gasoline in your engine. That's how you fuel your, your, your machine. And the human body is no different, and especially in the workplace nowadays. A lot of work we're hearing is technologically advanced. So it's like what you and I are doing right now. We're just sitting down. Uh. Most of us sit down <laughs> all day long. But the brain is going like crazy. The yeah. brain is thinking. And the brain is a very needy organism. It, it, it utilizes 20% of the energy of the whole entire body. I mean, think about it. It's 2% of our overall body weight, 2% the brain, if you were to take it out and weigh it. Mm -hmm. of your overall body weight, but he uses 20% of the energy. Okay. So for those of you who are working, who want to be successful in business, in life, take care of yourself. I mean, that's, that's just the bottom line. The, the, the better automobile you have, the better fuel that's in your automobile, you're going to be able to have a lot of fun by driving to a lot of destinations. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Oh, I'm so glad you were on the show. I hope you'll come back. Thank you for sure. This is great. <laughs> John, thank you for joining me today. I appreciate it. It's been wonderful. Thanks, Susan. All right, viewers, we're going to have links to John's website on the show notes for today. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.